Hello everyone, it's Richard Lewis here again with another video. Today I'm going to be talking about something I've talked a lot about in my channel and indeed my time as a journalist covering esports. I'm going to be talking about Chinese esports, in particular Chinese Counter-Strike. Now, those of you who have followed my position on Chinese Counter-Strike will know I, I've been a very vocal proponent of us cracking that market. Um, the Chinese games market is so huge. It's the bedrock of success for so many titles. Think, you know, Player Unknown Battlegrounds or uh, League of Legends. I think a recent audit showed that 70% of the entire league player base was based in China. So that is a huge number of people interested in your game and with their dif differing culture in terms of how they approach games, you know, playing in you know PC banks and it being a bit more social. Um, that it's, it's got this huge potential to sort of take off and become a cultural phenomenon if a game is popular in China. I've advocated for marketing Counter-Strike slightly differently on that basis. I think because of the improved protections uh, in regards to cheating, um, which is... Uh, you know, you have to have your, all your kind of personal identification and social security and whatnot all linked up to your games account... Uh, that uh, you can probably make it free to play in Asia. It gives a huge boost in numbers, huge boost in interest, huge boost in viewers, huge boost in investment. That's always been the way that I uh, have talked about getting big in China. But I also have said, because I know Chinese esports very well from years in the trenches covering it and, and how different it is and, and how uh, weird it can be and how corrupt it can be, um that it's a beast unto itself it is a problem that can never truly be conquered because you've got to think about it this way um how, how it, it, you know you, we the west cannot influence china on a political level with all of its power and economics and sanctions the idea that you're going to come into esports and say hey you're doing these things we don't like can you stop? Can you not do that? And they're going to go, oh, yeah, actually, yeah, yeah, of course, totally. <laughs> like, no, it's never going to happen. I've told people, and indeed I've covered multiple times, there's match fixing in Chinese CS. It's absolutely rife. It's abundantly clear when it's happening. I've got footage uh, and demos of games where it is so obvious that uh, teams are trying not to win rounds, flashing themselves, deliberately moving their crosshair up. And spread. You know, and I, I talk about it with a lot of betting platforms. And it's getting to the stage where they are very reluctant to even have these Chinese games on their sites. And uh, generally, it's the more nefarious platforms that are going to offer you odds because it's it's all bullshit. A lot of it is bullshit. Now, I don't want to characterize all players in China as being inherently corrupt, but this is on a this is on a business level. And I, I covered a lot of this like back in League of Legends. Uh, you know, there was there was organized crime, very you know. Uh, not directly involved, but in such a close proximity to how some of these organizations were funded. Players were being pushed into doing things they didn't want to do, meeting people they didn't want to meet. Uh, it, it's almost forgivable for, for, for the players to be involved in some of this because it's coming down from on high uh, in a lot of cases. And it's organized. It's organized on a level that we haven't uh, probably ever come across before in the west it's certainly on a in my opinion it it's on a much b bigger scale uh than say the i by power case was uh there is something rotten at the heart of chinese cs just in the same way we saw something rotten at the heart of south korean starcraft it's on that level for me and i and i think the sheer volume of games i see that are dubious the sheer amount of times i'm contacted about dubious betting patterns the sheer amount of times i see plays that make absolutely no sense and and freak results going one way or the other i i i think a year from now maybe we're all going to get that rude awakening and yeah it's going to turn out there was a lot of bullshit going on that maybe we weren't privy to or we didn't want to look too hard at right anyway with all of that in mind I'm going to talk about Fierce Tiger and what just utter nonsense we've seen out of that organization in the past few days. It is classic Chinese Counter-Strike. So let's get into it. So they were competing in something called the uh, Asian CSGO, so, sorry, CSGO Asia Championships. 
And what happened was Fierce Tiger were competing away in it. Uh, and then, boom, one of their players who was on the roster, a guy called Kun Leo Hu, was vac banned for, for cheating. Now, we all know uh, Valve have made huge strides in the improving. And I know it's a meme that people say, oh, vac doesn't do anything. Uh, they've implemented machine learning, you know, complex computer algorithms. They're constantly working on on Valve anti cheat. It's really a priority for Valve, um, and as a result, you are going to see more and more people given vac bans for supposedly private cheats. And indeed, compute th th with the computer learning, it now doesn't even matter whether or not it can use a detection method in the same way that Valve used to. Uh, it can now sort of detect behaviors, patterns, speed of movement, things like this to sort of rule conclusively one way or the other whether somebody is uh, cheating or not. So uh, it wasn't a surprise to see somebody get VAC banned quite quickly. Um, usually they leave it a few weeks. Uh, so who knows how long he's been cheating, but certainly my suspicions are that he was cheating in this very prominent tournament in the CSGO Asia tournaments, and it, because uh, it was $300,000 of prize money. Um, so anyway, the player got uh, VAC banned quite publicly. There's his account there, you can see. And that means he's obviously permanently banned from Valve-sponsored and Perfect World events. But this happened while the team, Fierce Tiger, were competing in the uh, Asian minor, the qualifications for the Asian minor, and they were now left having to uh, replace uh, a player. Now, Perfect World, and Perfect World are Valve's partner in China, because how it works legally in China is if you want to make profit in China with your business, you must be partnered with a Chinese business that shares in that profit. It's the only way you can enter into that market. And a lot of times you'll hear about these Faustian pacts that companies get involved in. Uh, where the terms aren't favorable or the Chinese side of the business isn't doing things they, the way they would like, but they can't do anything because it's, if, you, if you reject that partnership, <laughs> then, it, then it's over. You, know, you, you, you have to pull out of the Chinese territory and usually fiscally, it's not worth it. So Perfect World came out and said, we will continue to investigate any other misconduct. Additional punishment will be applied if any new issues are found and it will not be tolerated. Our original intention for hosting the CSGO Asia Championships is to increase China's global influence by running world-class tournaments while providing a highly competitive environment for Chinese teams to improve their level. This is what I was talking about when I talked about this like Chinese Super League a, a, a while ago. This is kind of what it turned into. Um, therefore, we take zero tolerance for any team or players in terms of cheating in the recent Chinese qualifier. We hope the other players and teams take this as a warning from this case. So, okay. So, I mean, that, that's it, right? Like, you've got to hold true to the idea that maybe his teammates didn't know that Leo was cheating. Certainly, the behavior of one player shouldn't necessarily impact on all of the others. You know, think uh, Kaylee. Uh, from the French scene and um, you know Titan, you know, is it is it fair that if all of those players were kind of tarred with that brush? Well, no. Um, certainly, I think disqualifying the team is reasonable, but anything beyond that uh, is problematic. But here's the thing: if it end, if the story ends there, it's nothing really. It's player tried to cheat in big tournament to win big money or, or get the opportunity to win big money happens all the time we've seen it in the online qualifiers where players will just go absolutely insane drop huge numbers uh, do things that are unthinkable and beat pro teams and we all know what's going on but obviously benefit of the doubt has to be applied without conclusive proof so um what happened next was just a few days later it was announced that Fierce Tiger had qualified for the Asian minor just a few days after having a VAC band uh, player on the roster. Now, in this tournament, they used a unknown player from an unknown account <laughs> um, with the name TB Girl. And... Um, it, it obviously this looks bad just on the surface it's probably worse than what we we think it is but they fielded an unknown player 
Uh, and a lot of people speculated that it was Leo. Uh, it doesn't look like that's the case. But they were able to win their uh, 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 game, uh, you know, to qualify. And a lot of people started to get uh, a bit antsy about this. Because obviously, a couple of days after a VAC ban, a completely unknown player with an unknown name, with an unknown account, comes in and you qualify for the minor with that player. A lot of people are going to be thinking, well... What, why is this an unknown player? Why is this a, an account that has no association with pro people, uh, you know, pro players? Why is this the case? Uh, are they cheating again? And this generated a lot of chatter online. Now, what actually uh, it sort of came to pass is, and, and this now seems to be the consensus within the community, is that TB Girl is a name that has been used uh, by a player um, in the past called Supreme. Now, if you're a regular viewer of my videos, you'll probably already know who Supreme is. We'll get into that in a second, but I'm just going to uh, quickly show you why we think that, because on this account, uh, on previous accounts, Supreme has uh, used the name TB Girl, and TB is a another uh, pro player. So it was all a bit strange that it sort of came out the way that it did. Um, but I will just show you here. Someone publicly posted it on Twitter, like uh, the account number of, of a Supreme account with the name uh, TB Girl. A lot of Chinese people were very vocal. And you can see here, Alex Deng, uh, Flames FPS. He came out and said, yes, this is the one uh, used in the minor. Um, and uh, there we have it. So... And you can also see here that uh, Mr. Chen quite helpfully posted a picture saying this is when TB Girl won a small LAN in 2015. And uh, it uh, actually looks like Supreme. So now we are in a position to say, okay, Supreme and the name TB Girl and this account that was used in the minor. There's enough overlap there to say that it is Supreme. There's a slight problem. Uh, with the introduction of Supreme. Um, um, and again, it's, it just kind of underlies some of the issues that you have in Chinese Counter-Strike, and that is that Supreme is a player who was already suspended for match-fixing, which I reported. There was a dubious match here on July the 3rd. Again, that, that'll give you the date to find my video about it, between TOT versus EMP. And in an official letter from World Cyber Arena that was posted publicly... They listed uh, five players as being banned for a year because of this uh, match-fixing incident, uh, which is very generous, uh, generous a punishment. Uh, but I imagine, obviously, if they were handing out perm bans in this region, they would get through their pro player base pr pretty <laughs> quickly, or certainly quicker than other regions. And you can see their game ID is Supreme, uh, and there's the name of the player. So, I mean, there's, there's already lots of questions, isn't there? Why is he playing on this new account? Why is he trying? Is he hiding who he is because of the shame of this incident? Is there something more nefarious going on? Why did Fierce Tiger, out of all of the players they could find, why did they have to find someone who's been complicit in dubious games, fixed matches, and strange betting patterns in the past? Why did they have to go to this person? There's a lot of questions that we can't really answer. But here's where the story gets even murkier. Now, you will notice that Fierce Tiger qualified not by directly beating somebody, but by a, a forfeit, effectively. The team they were due to play had to forfeit the match due to internet issues, and that was VG Flash. So what were those internet issues? Well, VG Flash, <laughs> their, their internet got cut. Their internet physically the wire into their house physically got cut just before the qualifier was due to be played yes that that is what happened interestingly enough if you read uh, about this tot emp game there was all sorts of issues about you know ip addresses changing people complaining that their internet went down i oh, you know it's madness it is utter madness the things that goes on out there but anyway here it is uh, as reported on hltv with translations 
VG Flash, basically were due to play Fierce Tiger, and their internet just went out, and they couldn't play the game. Um, and obviously, with all of the issues around Fierce Tiger, there was certainly a good argument to say VG Flash were favourites for this. They were using an, an as of then, unknown stand-in. Uh, they've had all the turmoil and problems that probably disrupted their practice and preparation. VG Flash, it, it certainly makes no sense to me to suggest VG Flash would have faked this to get out of the game and potentially forfeit a spot in the minor as a result of that. So VG Flash wanted to play. Uh, they went to the place where their where their internet was, uh, you know, the wire was coming into their property, and it, the, they physically had a uh, proof, as you can see here, uh, that the the wire had been cut. I'll just play this for you. Vertical video, cardinal sim, but like they went out and, and they filmed this to prove it. And you can see here the technician is pointing at the wire saying this, Yeah, this is where you should have a wire going in But they don't the whole wire was taken out Now I'll give you the translation here uh, Supposedly there should be a wire here, but he checked on your cable pulled it out and made a mark So it was only pulled out then what about this wire? Maybe it's because of this plug area. So we unplugged our plug. No, they unplugged the cable inside. They unplugged the cable inside and you've already fixed it for us. Yes. So somebody went, physically pulled the cable out to the house. That's undisputed. Now, it's incredibly strange, isn't it? That somebody would go, to, first of all, would know where VG Flash are. Know that they're about to play a must-win qualifier. And... No, be able to discern which wire is the one to unplug to fuck up their ability to play the game it's kind of like I, I don't know like this was planned planned by someone who must have been a really big fan of fierce tiger because it's a hell of a coincidence that the only beneficiaries of this are fierce tiger so i'll read you the fierce tiger side of things in just a moment but let's have a look here first. So VG Flash said, after the map vetoes were completed, three of our VG Flash players joined the server, and at this time the internet at our place disconnected. So immediately after the vetoes, after a lot of retries to reconnect, we swiftly got in contact with the face admins about the situation. After the admins agreed to delay the match, we immediately moved our PCs to the house next door and borrowed their internet connection to play the match. And you can see here they did physically move their PCs to try and borrow their internet at the same time the technician arrived to check they found out that the cable coming into our house that was in a connection hub cabinet outside house was specifically marked and unplugged so somebody had put a mark next to the wire and then somebody else came and unplugged that wire that's what we again that's what we can discern uh the technicians contacted their headquarters and told our team leader that unknown people had been asking about their address and their internet connection layout yesterday. So somebody was physically like calling up the call center and saying, hey, you know, uh, I'm with VG Flash. Which one's my internet connection? Some bullshit like this, right? Like some low level social engineering shit. Then obviously... They tried to communicate what was happening during the match. Now, again, I can see no reason under these circumstances not to just simply reschedule the game. I do not understand why Fierce Tiger, sure, it's it's for a minor, it's a big deal, but why would any professional team want to invoke the exact letter of the law when another team has been sabotaged, physically sabotaged in their team house? Why would you ever want to win that way? This isn't they didn't upload a demo when we suspect a player is cheating. This is physically someone came to our house and unplugged our connection. Now listen, let's assume Fierce Tiger had absolutely nothing to do with it. I mean, what an outrageous suggestion, Richard. Right? But let's assume they did have nothing to do with it. This, is, this could be a better, somebody who was worried about losing the game after he saw the vetoes, somebody that had like a lot of money riding on it, and uh, you know, some group, some cartel, and they were like, well actually, no, fuck this, we need, to, we need to get this all these bets off, the only way to do it is forfeit the game. Why would any pro team want to benefit from that type of entity disrupting games? That'd be like saying, oh, well, you know, our opponent's got DDoS, we take the, we take the win, right? Sure, it's your opponent today, it's you tomorrow. So why would you ever want to win that way? So again, it makes it hugely suspicious. Um, 
And you can see here, look, uh, this is it's just some more interesting background. The VG Flash roster was created not long ago, and we're given significant attention by the Chinese player base. VG Flash is a powerful contender in the minor qualifier, yes. I mean, we're very confident of securing our slot to the Asia minor. The internet issues are purely unexpected and highly possible it was done maliciously. We don't have any reason to intentionally delay the match by creating the issue ourselves. Many factors that caused this ending has impacted our organization and the players heavily. We are fully... I'd be fucking scared, and that'd be point number one. People know where you live and are coming to your house to fuck with your internet connection and who knows what else to make you lose games yeah it would affect me we are fully committed to keeping the communication up with the admins and our circumstances are totally different uh, than the other teams that were disqualified in the tournament we hope that the organizers improve their online tournament rules and allow more tolerance for any unexpected issues during online matches please make the correct decision and have a rematch played face it and i am inclined to agree that they should have a rematch Here's the thing, Fierce Tiger, yeah, they don't like this rematch idea quite so much. In fact, they were threatening action against Face It, which keep in mind this is uh, this is a this is a minor, so it's an official Valve sanctioned tournament, and therefore it is partnered with some pretty heavy hitters over in China. And I'm sure Face It want to keep doing the, these kind of uh, tournaments and events, and have got the major coming up in London, so don't want to incur any ire. But yeah, it turns out that Fierce Tiger was so incensed. And just totally not understanding whatsoever that they were even threatening face it if they didn't disqualify them. Okay, so here it is. Now, you can't see the name there cut off, but that's Fabe. Fabe is obviously one of the more um, kind of uh, uh, well-known faces of face it who handles stuff and communicates with the community and deals with admin issues. You know, he was over there when face it were partnering with e-league and stuff so you know this this guy's very much part of the furniture at face it and and this what the fuck shut the fuck up great name uh for uh, a, a manager there um it is the representative for fierce tiger and he said yesterday there was a team that fell into the server on time because of network reasons and did not give the time to wait for repair today they are also due to network reasons and we gave them a time to repair of more than one hour they have violated the time required for the competition by the way thank you that's all thanks time is up the organizers the organizers note will be punished according to the rules of china's minor preliminaries thank you so Again, just like zero understanding. Like, oh, we gave you an hour? Like, dude, someone came at the fucking house and ripped an internet cable out. It's not going to be a quick fix necessarily. First, we have to discern what it is. At that point, you don't even know what it is. So um, this is, again, just really you know, poor sportsmanship. It, it looks incredibly uh, dubious because it's like, it's like you're grasping at this as your opportunity to win, which again links to the potential idea that maybe, just maybe, you had something to do with it. Now, look, we'll get back to their version. Uh, that's the uh, Fierce Tigers version. And they say here, one, we followed the rules set by organizers and joined the face of Asia Minor China qualify a match lobby on time two vg flash could not start the match of time due to unexpected issues three after communicating with the admins initially face it said we should wait 10 minutes all chat logs with the admins are in this video provided that's where the screenshot of this um, particular incident uh, comes from after 10 and a half minutes none of the admins notified us of when we could start the match after a while one of vg flash's members came online notified the admins that they had problems with their internet connection at their place even after switching servers they then asked the admins if they could be given more time to fix their issue this occurred at 225 after learning about the situation we understood and agreed to wait a little longer after waiting for an extended period of time without any further communication with us they rescheduled the grand final at 4 p.m we feel that we aren't being respected and properly treated so we sent the following points to the admins now again this is just an additional hour and a half. There's LAN tournaments that have delays more than this. You know, it, this unfortunately is just part and parcel of the landscape within which we work. And teams should have respected this because, as I said, it, can, it, it might be your opponent's today and you can take the W and benefit from it. But when it's you tomorrow, you'll be crying about how our oh, people weren't, you know, didn't treat us fairly and stuff. You know, we've seen that, for example, with, uh, you know, Brazilian teams in, in CS. When it when it's against them, they, they want sportsmanship and fairness. But when it's for them, they publicly say, well, no, this is, we're taking the win and that's the rules. Can't have it both ways, guys. 
Uh, yesterday in the same tournament, our opponent in the first match didn't enter ready in the specified time slot after joining the server, which caused the server to close down by itself with the opposition losing by forfeit. I mean, again, why nobody's even talking about that first game. So you're telling me just days after having a VAC ban player on your fucking team, everyone else is just somehow forfeiting against you. They need to be fucking looked at. I guarantee you, they're probably going at somebody is going to teams and saying, hey, want to forfeit this game? Want to forfeit this game? This is a fucking minor qualifier. This is nonsense. Uh, the, second the second match versus Max, only one of their players entered ready before the match started. Therefore, the match took place as a 1v5 scenario until the end of the game. They appealed the result to the admins, but they were also given the loss. How is one team this lucky? This is like when Mr. Burns had the fucking softball team of ringers, and one by one, they all would all of them were, you know, befallen with these misfortunes. It's incredible that it just keeps happening to benefit Fierce Tiger, doesn't it? I mean, it's madness. How is this going on? Finally, the events of today happened. We gave VG Flash one hour and ten minutes to handle the unexpected issue. However, they delayed the match to 4 p.m. without communicating with us beforehand. Although friendship comes first and competition comes second, uh, there should be no exception to the rules. We have to face this decision is based on the rule set. In the end, the decision was made by the organizer, and we feel deeply sorry. So... It start, so far, the, uh, the the forfeit victory and them being in the minor stands. Let me tell you this. I haven't even brought up those other games because I'm, I'm trying to get the demos so I can watch and I'm trying to do my own investigation in a looking at all of that. Because there is no fucking way one team through a minor keeps getting forfeits and all these fucked up incidents and then the one opponent that you would probably say should beat them Someone goes to the house and rips their internet cable out. And this is all just a few days after one of your players was just rolling around with fucking cheats and got back banned. Yeah. I'm sorry. The own like, I would just go one further here. I would just be like, listen, you're out. Fuck you. There's something rotten about this. Uh, uh, we're going to conduct our own investigation. But based on the evidence that we've got here, we don't feel comfortable having you go through with the minor. And you're going to go, Richard, but I thought you said you've got to have absolute proof before you do anything. Yeah, you kind of do. But if I presented all of this, like imagine it's a court case and if you presented all of this to a fucking jury, you would go on the balance of probability. And the balance of probability is that something is going on that is influencing these outcomes to always benefit Fierce Tiger. And that's a, a grave concern to me. This is the integrity of an entire sport in a region here. This is fucking gibberish. So... At a bare minimum, face it should just issue the edict, whether it's in their rules or not, because we all know every set of tournament rules has a rule at the end where it says we can do whatever the fuck we want because we're organizing the tournament. They should issue a replay and make Fierce Tiger play against v VG Flash. End. The end. Right? And if there's any fuckery in that game, just get them out. Just get them out. Because this is, this is nonsense. So what I'm going to be spending my next few days doing is I'm going to look into those games, look into all of this stuff, try and talk to some of my Chinese sources, eventually present my findings. I'm going to start uh, at the time of recording this. I'm going to sit down and look at Leo's demos to see and discern whether or not he was actually cheating in that Asian CSGO championship. I'm pretty sure he will have been. Uh, he, had, he had a monstrous performance on a must-win map against Tai Lu. That is incredibly dubious. But yeah, this, this, is, this is the state of Chinese CS, and it's going to stay this way unfortunately, unless people start man-moding it. Like, we, we have got to take firm and tough decisions against teams that are embroiled in these kind of controversies. Enough's enough. Enough's enough. We want China to be in CSGO. We want Chinese CSGO to be a big thing. But all of this, do, all, all of this is doing is just hurting it. It's going to stifle the growth. It's going to kill the game in that region because people will not want to be part of something this inherently corrupt. It's just nonsense. I can't even believe I'm having to tell you all about it. Anyway, there you go. Uh, as soon as I get my findings, I'll either present them on, on my website or I'll do another video. Uh, until then, take care of yourselves. Don't bet on Chinese games, guys. And I'll see you next time.